Hi, all my little YouTube and Instagram friends. It's Birdie here, the recycled hippie chick. <sighs> okay, believe it or not, I have kind of organized myself for this video. I don't think I've ever done that before. I need therapy today. I have to, I'm going to talk to you while I'm showing you my slow stitch. I've been doing these in the house. I've been doing them, um, um, and I bought a whole package of beading needles, and I couldn't find them for the longest time. So I've just been doing the slow stitch part, and then when I was done, and I finally just two days ago found my beading needles, went back through and beaded. Why, Bertie, what are you going to do with these slow stitches? I have no clue. Maybe I can just glue them onto a cover. Some of them, though, I didn't think. Like, this one would have to go this way. I didn't think about using them on a cover, so I didn't think when I was doing it that maybe I should have made things go this way so you could, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I thought I'd share them with you because I put a lot of work into them. There's a lot of work in these little stitches and beads. And I just wanted to share with you what I had done. This could almost go this way. Except for then you have this on the spine. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I have several more that I should have got and showed you. And I didn't, didn't get them out. So today I'm going to be working on my Arlene's journal. Out of a made from um, vacuum sweeper bags. I think this is the third in my series. Maybe the... I don't know. It should be about my third in the series. Anyway, I'm going through and doing them, which, am I doing this the right way? No, my pictures are upside down. It goes this way. So this is my own journal for myself. And I'm going through, oh, how cute. I don't remember doing that. How cute. Sometimes you do something and you go, oh my goodness. Okay, here's one with a pocket. I found a few things. I found this picture. This was in a magazine. And I liked the colors and the oldness of the, you know, I probably have terrible light. Don't I? I liked the colors and the picture in it. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to use that for like collage. And then I found this picture of this prude. And I thought she needed to be in there. And it says she was a soprano. She was in the music department of this page. So I thought I would... You help me through many upsets, and you'll never know just how much I appreciated it. You have taught me, and then it's been ripped off. Maybe she has needed to go through some upsets. Or surely she has with a prude face like that. She's a soprano, so I thought maybe I'd rip out some music sheets. And we'll see where this goes. I saw a little belly band. I saw a little technique that a lady did on YouTube, and so I wanted to try it out. So it was where you um, put your paint or whatever, and you spray water on it, and then you take your page or whatever and tap it on top of it. You get some different layered effects. Oh my gosh, look. Look, look, look. This would go with it. This was, at one time, a yo-yo. I found this in my Nani's couch under the cushion. So it has been under that cushion for a long time. 
so I wanted to incorporate it so I threw it on my desk and look it's just like it's meant to be it's got all these colors in it and this was just laying in my book so look I've got my color palette thank you Lord that just came together anyway this lady was tap 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 and she was actually using plastic and she was putting her paint on watering it and tap tap tapping it and as I'm telling you, I think maybe I've done it before and I don't remember. I thought, you know what? I have this little bitty gel plate. Why not use it? Well, I have spent the past 30 minutes searching for it all over. Can't find it. Instead of getting my big one out or a piece of plastic saying, big deal, let's get on with it. I spend all that time looking for it. So that's what I've been doing. I'm burning daylight. I have to go in town and clean a, another little elderly lady's house that I know. Ooh, that's a good size. Let's do the back of this. She's out of town, wanted me to check on her cat and clean her house. So I am burning daylight to go do that, you guys. And I'm having such anxiety over it that I just thought, go out. Drink your coffee, do a page, and just get over it and go. So that's what I'm doing. I uh, I don't mean to have anxiety, but I do. I have not talked to you guys in quite some time. A lot has, uh, I feel like a lot has gone on. Um, this is kind of a, this is not my normal brush. Just a minute, I need my normal brush. Okay. I don't know if I told you guys that I, ha I had, I'm just gonna tell you again, because I don't remember. You just forgive me and know that my brain is mush. And that I just don't remember what I say and what I don't. Five years ago when I thought, you know, when I got bit by all those ticks and I thought, oh my gosh, maybe I have Lyme. I started looking up Lyme doctors. Well, there were none in Wichita. And it was telling me that the only doctor close to me was in outside of Columbia, Missouri. And his name was Dr. Christ. Well, he didn't, I called him. And his little gal said he didn't accept insurance. And I just went blank after that. Like, okay, well, I can't do it if you don't take insurance. I, I can't. So, um, I just marked him off. Well, here it is. Five years later, 13 doctors down the road trying to figure out what's wrong, trying to get someone to help me with Lyme in my area that insurance would cover. I go clean house for my friend Terrell one day, and she says, Amy, my son has a friend in St. Louis, and she has Lyme, and she was talking about on Facebook how she went to this doctor outside of Columbia, Missouri named Dr. Christ, and he's really helped her. And I'm like, yeah, Terrell, that's the very first guy I looked up, and it's $1,500 to go talk to him, and I couldn't afford it. Well, she said, please make an appointment with him, and I'll drive you up there. I come home, I'm like thinking, well, I can't. I don't have $1,500, you know. Thank you very much, but I can't do it. Little did my husband know that all this conversation had gone on with me and Terrell. He comes in one day with a check and puts it down on the table and says, Hey, I just sold a jet ski two jet skis. I want you to have this money and I want you to go to that doctor in Missouri and see if you can get some help. I'm like, 
He has no idea that I've been discussing this with Terrell. So I felt like that was the Lord trying to tell me, hey, ding dong, knock two times, here you go, head to Missouri. So I made an appointment with Dr. Christ. Terrell took me up there. It's been two weeks ago now. He had sent me uh, his little, whatever you call a receptionist or whatever, had sent me 40 pages of a questionnaire that I had to fill out. I had to do a week's worth three times a day of uh, temperature. I had to do all these different kinds of things to go up there. And I went. My appointment was at 6.30 in the morning. And um, God bless Terrell's heart for going with me. We got, she and I went up. It was a five-hour journey, and we went up, and we spent the night in Columbia. He actually, his little, uh, his clinic is about 20, 30 minutes outside of Columbia. I don't remember the town. Sorry. And um, so we spent the night in Columbia, and we got up early and went to our my 6.30 appointment. And I bought this little handheld recorder and took it with me asked him, number one, would it be okay if Terrell sat in with me? My husband couldn't go, and that way he could hear what all the doctor had to say, and asked if Terrell could sit in and be some ears with me. He said that would be fine, and I could also tape it. So, I did all of the above, and I'm glad I did because... He is so smart and so technical that I, Terrell and I both left that appointment going, you know, we had, we were just like, uh, he's so smart that we had no clue what he was saying. Actually, you know, as he, d he does this every day. I know nothing about it. I'm still trying to figure out what, what's going on in my life. First thing I wanted to ask him was, am I crazy? Because I felt like I need a counselor because this is just making me absolutely crazy. Not knowing what's wrong. Everybody saying that I'm okay. Asking me, do I need an antidepressant? And do I need to see a counselor? The last doctor I talked to asked me, Would you, do you think you should go see a counselor? I'm like, uh, no, I need to know if I have Lyme or not. Anyway. He said, according to my paperwork that I filled out, he said, no, Amy, you're not crazy. He said, have you ever heard of Groundhog Day? And I said, yeah. And he said, it's like I'm reliving the same day over and over with every patient I see. Different symptoms, same story. I see, you know, 1,500 Amy's every year that have the same questions and the same problems that you have. So that made me feel like I'm not crazy. So as he goes through all of this stuff, what do I want to do? Put some gesso on there. It's so pretty. And then you guys cover it up. But I'm going to do it. He said out of all the questions that I answered that I ranked 65 percentile for having a tick-borne illness and that he would like to do this test that one of the, there's four tests that they do he does depending on how you answer your questions tells you what strain I'm gonna say strain I know nothing about Lyme I'm gonna call it a strain I don't know a different type of um, Lyme bacteria that you have depends on what test you get. So he told me which test he thought I should have. And um, we proceeded to do it. So I took the blood test and that will take up to three weeks to get the results back on.
So that's where I'm at. I'm in limbo, but he said because he sees so many of these, you know, worksheets that I did that he can almost uh, diagnose you without even taking the test, he uh, wants me to go ahead and get started on the protocol, even though we're waiting on the test. I have to trust this man. I don't know. I don't know. I've seen so many quacky doctors that it's now I have an issue, you know, with even trusting people. So he wants me to go ahead and get started on the protocol, which is uh, I have seven. I will have seven, not seven, four. Uh, what do you call them? Courses of antibiotic. The first one, first of all, I have to come home. I had to come home and get off gluten and sugar all the four deadly whites, he calls them, because with all these antibiotics, I'm bound to get yeast. And, uh, and so he wants me, and sugar and gluten agitate, you know, feed the yeast. So I have to, I had to come home and get off of gluten and all the four deadly whites, which is, you know, sugar, flour, pasta, rice. So I got off of those and wants me to get on a really good anti, uh, probiotic before I start. And I have uh, five or six pages of labs to do. So today, on my way in, I'm taking my labs. I have to take them, I have to hand take them to the lab. Um, what I do is, he doesn't take insurance because everybody's so up in arms about the Lyme thing that he won't even deal with the insurance. So I had to self-claim to see if they'll even cover it. And then I take my lab straight into the lab and have it done there. That way my insurance will cover that. Um, I have five pages of labs. Each one has 10 or 15 items on it that needs to be checked. So I take that in there today, let them look over it so they can be deciding what all they need to do. Then they'll make me an appointment. I know some of them are fasting and need to be done at eight o'clock in the morning like cortisol levels or whatever. I don't know. I don't understand any of it, but, uh, and he wants it done on a Monday or through Wednesday because he said he, he does not like you to do your labs on a Friday because most likely they sit in a mailbox somewhere in the mail, the ones that have to be sent out. And then you've, had your blood in the mail somewhere for all weekend. So I'm doing that and then I'm going to go clean this lady's house. Um, I ranked high in the neurological area, which makes sense to me. Some of the things that make me feel like I'm crazy are the buzzing in my head, the spiders climbing up the back of my scalp, the depression, the anxiety, the crazy feelings I have. Those are part of what make me feel like I'm crazy. And he said, no, it's the neurological part. This is not spreading out like that lady's did. Although she used distress ink and I'm just using paint. That could be a problem. It could be a reason, right? And so it made me realize these days, like today, when I don't want to go somewhere and I'm freaking out about it and I'm losing sleep over it and I don't know why, now I know why. It's not me. Oh, I'm that pretty. It's not me. It's my issue, my illness, whatever it is. Okay, now, I need, I need to get rid of this on here. 
But I have, knowing I have to go help this lady, and I cannot tell her no, and I really need to tell her no, but I can't. Because she's elderly, and I feel like the elderly need me, and I can't. So to my detriment, I go, and then I crash the next day, and I feel terrible, and I'll be in bed all day tomorrow on my Saturday. Because I'm going to go clean this lady's house. Because I can't say no. And I need the money. So, I didn't hardly sleep all night last night worrying about it and I've been up in arms about it all day today to the point where it makes me have mouth sores. The anxiety is crazy because because you see it, okay? So it's not like something your family has to go, mom, you have anxiety. No, you know it. You see it and you can't do anything about it because it's just happening. I'm going to dry this the depression, you say, what on earth do you have to be depressed about? You know, you, you don't even work. You live, you stay at home and your husband takes care of you. And what on earth do you have to be depressed about? And you don't know because it's just happening. So yeah, all these things. I just love how that worked out. I don't even want to go over it with this. I know I should probably add more layers but this here's a little Seth app this is a Seth Apner thing going on right down here see that all this corner that's Seth Apner right now I'm telling you I have just I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to write Seth yeah. Seth Apner that's inspiration right there okay I'm trying not, I'm going to put her up high, my little yo-yo from Nani, because this book is getting so fat that I told myself I wasn't going to do any thick layers, and then I found these two pieces, and, and here I am layering. I was going to try to keep it as flat as possible. So, that is what's going on in my neck of the woods. And I knew I'm going to crash after this cleaning today. So, I just wanted to come out here and uh, get my hands dirty and relieve some stress and anxiety by talking to you guys before I go. That has no orange in it. You can really pull the pink out when you want to lay it down and try to use it. I'm just wanting to layer this lady a little bit. That's all I'm wanting to do. That's all I'm wanting to do. I, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll turn it this way. Like this. Okay. That's what I'll do right there. Okay. That's it right there. And then that will be good. So my first line of defense after I get my labs done and I get my gluten thing going good and is I get he starts me out on quinine and hydroxychloroquine. Now if those sound familiar to you as COVID drugs, they are. Um, that's the I believe that's the very regimen that Doc Donald Trump took when he got it. Uh, he said, I may very well have trouble getting it, 
the hydroxychloroquine because when all this hit, they completely took it off out of the, you weren't, you weren't even able to get it for a long time out of the um, pharmacies. You know, something works, heaven forbid, we use it, let's get it off the shelf. And Dr. Chris said he's been using it to treat Lyme, allergies, and uh, asthma patients for 30 years. And then all of a sudden, his patients can't get their drug. So he said he's had quite a time. So he said if you cannot get it, if your pharmacy still will not give it to you, have them call me. I'll explain to them what I'm treating you for. So that's my first... That'll be my first regimen. And then, after I take that for four weeks, we do labs and see where I'm at. And if I need to continue on to the next line of antibiotics, then he has another line, up to four rounds that I will take of different kinds of antibiotics. But I I'm, I talk to you guys because I don't want to, I just feel like I bother my husband. I know I don't because here he sold jet skis to get me help. There's times when just me talking about it, talking through something like this, I can remember what the doctor said or things I was having doubts about now make sense to me because, you know, you kind of talk through it. But I don't want to, I don't want to always have to make him be my sounding board. I'm sure by now. He's just listening to me, and it's not even absorbing. So, so you guys are now either stopping the video and continuing on because you are zoning out, or you realize you're my counselor, and, and you're letting me vent, and I so appreciate it. And also, I was thinking, if there was one person that listens to me and says, oh my gosh, you know, I have those symptoms or, oh my gosh, I have a, a grandchild or a, a kid or, you know, a spouse or whatever. Maybe that's what's wrong with them because this is getting to be quite, it's all over. And of course you don't hear about it, but now, you know, Justin Bieber's got it and, 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 Debbie Gibson and these different celebrities have it. Well, now you're hearing about it. But before, it was a, no, she's crazy. She needs therapy. Look at that, would you? We just did a page, and I feel like I want to put a little word up here. But I don't know where my words are. They're not words. Um, I should probably just talk about more of my symptoms. Here, this would be a good one for a little prude. I missed the forest for the trees. Because she was too busy being sassy. Right? But I will tell you, I have become so negative. I'm telling you, if you have a, a friend or a loved one that you think, oh my gosh, their personality has changed or whatever. These are, these are signs and symptoms. I am so negative now and I see it. It's like you're seeing yourself change and you can't do anything about it. I'm normally the happy-go-lucky, fun person. Hey, let's have Amy go with us. She's fun. Not anymore. I do not see 
the forest for the trees because I see the bad side of everything and I do not know why. Well, I do know why, but I can't do nothing about it. And it just really is frustrating, frustrates the heck out of me. You know, I know people look at my Facebook or my Instagram or my YouTube videos. I am an award-winning actress. I can fake it until the, the camera shuts off. And my Facebook looks like I'm the best grandma and I just do all these fun things. But what they don't see is when I did it, it was very quick, short-lived. I don't go spend a whole day with my grandkids anymore. It's like for an hour at a time. So, you know, you look at somebody's Facebook and you think they're all having this wonderful, exciting life. And guess what? They're not. They're actresses too. And when the lights go off, poop hits the fan. And their families, their families are happening to pay for it. It's dark up here. I took that great big bright light down because it was too glary. And I put this little lamp, which is right here. And it's still, I don't know. You let me know how the light is working. I'm just really excited about my little Seth Apner corner. But there you go, guys. Pray for me. I literally, it's noon and I literally have to go. I have to go get this done. Anyway, have a good day. Bye-bye.